Good morning students. I am Dr. N. Hema Shenbaham, Associate Professor, PG and Research Department of Microbiology. Today, we are going to see about microbial interaction. Interaction, it may be occur either between a microbes or within uh, plants or it may be uh, sometimes it may be occur within uh, animal. So, but today we are going to see about an interaction between the microbes. So, in this interactions it may be either a positive interactions or a negative interactions. Before that what is meant by an interactions? Usually the microbes they may interact with each other and it can be physically associated with the another organisms in a variety of ways. So, one organisms which may be located on the surface of the another organism they are termed as a ectobiont whereas, if it is located within that particular organism it is termed as a endobiont. So, based upon that the microbial interactions it is classified into a positive interaction or a negative interaction. Positive interaction here there are two populations that is a population A as well as a population B. In this case both the populations may be get benefited or one populations will be get benefited and the other populations may be unaffected. Whereas, in the negative interactions here one of the population is get benefited and the other populations are unaffected as well as they are completely destroyed. So, this is an uh, next slide please. Uh, in, the, in the case of the positive interactions, synergism, proto cooperations, as well as uh, mutualism, symbiosis, like that, various interactions comes under a positive interaction. Whereas in the negative interactions, it includes competitions, parasitisms, predations, like that, uh, amansalism, like that. So, today we are going to see about uh, that is a positive interactions. So, in the positive interaction the first thing is said to be the mutualism. So, mutualism it is defined as a relationship in which that is the each organisms in interactions it gets a specific benefit from the other organisms and it is said to be an obligatory relationship. An obligatory relationship is nothing but that is one organisms is it, it is specifically bind with the that particular organisms. So, a mutual relationship is said to be very specific. So, where, where one member of the association cannot be replaced by the another species and in this case in this mutualism it requires a close physical contact between the particular species and then the relationship of this uh, uh, mutualism so it allows the organisms to be exist in a habitat. So, if they exist as a habitat means they will be look like a single type of organism. A very good example for mutualism is said to be next slide please lichens. So, lichens are said to be an excellent example of mutualism. So, in this case the lichens what is meant by a lichens? A lichens is nothing but it is an interaction takes place between an algae as well as a fungi. So, this fungi which has been get associated with the algae they are termed as a mycobiont whereas, the fungal the algal partners are termed as a phycobiont. So, both the mycobiont as well as the phycobiont they are mutually get benefited. So, in the case of phycobiont they are the nothing but the photo autotrophs that is they are algae. So, the fungus they get it is a carbon source from the algae and the fungi it protects the phycobiont from the extreme conditions and they also provide water and minerals to the algae. So, this lichens both the fungi as well as the algae they are get mutually benefited and due to that they can able to survive in an extreme environmental conditions particularly in a high temperature as well as in a drying conditions. And another example for the mutualism is said to be protozoan and termite association. So, 
see the picture the protosome and termite relationship it has been shown in the picture that is the flagellated protozoa which will be feed on the diet of the carbohydrate the carbohydrate which has been acquired by the termite usually the termite it will be placed in the uh, it will be uh, uh, that is it will be seen in a woody regions so they they will uh, eat the woods as well as they ma mainly the cellulose hemicellulose and lignins which has been obtained from the termite which is utilized as a carbon source from the uh, by the protozoa and in turn after eating this uh, cellulose they uh, in turn they provide acetic acid so this acetic acid it is utilized by the termites next slide please and another example for the mutualism is said to be the that is paramecium as well as chlorella paramecium is nothing but it is a protozoa whereas the chlorella it belongs to the algae so if both get intact what happens the algae it provides the protozoan partner with, uh, with the carbon as well as the oxygen in turn the protozoa it provides a uh, protections as well as carbon dioxide and other growth factors so this while providing this what happens means the protozoa they can able to survive in an anaerobic conditions and they can be live as long there is a sufficient light and next slide please so this uh, and, and another example for the positive interactions is said to be syntropism the first thing we have seen mutualisms and few examples for the mutualism and the second one is said to be the syntropism in the case of the syntropism in association what happens the growth of one organism it may be either depends or it can be improved by the substrate provided by the another organisms in syntropism both the organisms are also get benefited for example if there is a population one this population one it uh, can be able to utilize the compound a but this compound a it cannot be directly utilized by the and second populations but they can be able to produce an another type of a compound that compound is ter termed as a b but both the populations that is compound a as well as uh, well, sorry both the populations one and two they can be able to utilize the compound c so in this case a product which is obtained as a compound c it can be utilized by the population one as well as by the two so in this case also both the populations are get benefited next slide and another example for syntropism is nothing but that is a methanogenic ecosystem in sludge digester so here a uh, methane which is produced by the meth methanogenic bacteria so this has been utilized by the fermentative bacteria so in return the fermentative bacteria it provides carbon dioxide as well as the hydrogen so this carbon dioxide and the hydrogen it can be utilized as a ca ca carbon source which is utilized by the methanogenic bacteria so this is said to be a cyclic process and another example is lactobacillus as well as enterococcus faecalis so here the lactobacillus and enterococcus faecalis they can't able to grow to uh, alone in a minimal media because a minimal media is nothing but that is which which is not provided with any supplements so in this case both if both the organisms has been present together means the organisms can able to grow so they need some supplements which is needed for their growth for example enterococcus faecalis they requires the folic acid so this folic acid it has been produced by the lactobacillus whereas lactobacillus they in turn requires that the lactobacillus they requires a phenyl alanine which is nothing but an amino acid so this phenyl alanine it has been produced by the enterococcus faecalis so the enterococcus faecalis as well as the lactobacillus they can able to grow in a minimal media when they are present together and then Pro, the next type of an interaction is said to be a proto cooperation so this proto cooperation it is an mutually in this case also both the populations are said to be mutually benefited 
this interactions is similar to the mutualism, but the main difference is it is not an obligate that is it is the interactions is not specific in the case of the mutualism the interactions are said to be specific whereas in this case it is not obligatory as in mutualism and then next slide please an example for proto cooperation has nothing but an association of d sulfo vibrio and chromatium so this both this uh, d sulfo vibrio as well as the chromatiums they are involved in carbon cycle as well as in sulfur cycle and like an another example for proto cooperation is an interaction takes place between a nitrogen fixing bacteria and a cellulolytic bacteria the cellulose the cellulolytic bacteria such as cellulomonas <coughs> and then and another type of an interactions in in these three cases we have seen that both the populations are get benefited whereas in commensalism only one populations will be get benefited whereas the other population is said to be unaffected so commensal it is an association this association is benefited while the other organisms of the association is neither benefited nor it is harmed that is it is unaffected so it is an unidirectional association and if the commensal is separated from the host it uh, it can able to survive it can able to survive and next slide an example for commensalism is nothing but a non pathogenic e coli which has been present in the intestinal tract of the human being so the e coli it is said to be a facultative anaerobes so this facultative anaerobes they can able to use the oxygen and it lowers the oxygen concentration so it creates an anaerobic condition so this anaerobic conditions is suitable for the obligate anaerobes an example for obligate anaerobes is nothing but the bacteria and then an another example for commensalism is a flavobacterium and legionella nemophilia so this flavobacterium it excrete an amino acid that is cysteine so this cysteine which is uh, used by legionella and they can able to survive in an aquatic habitat so the association of and another example is the association of nitrosomonas as well as nitrobacter which is mainly helpful for the process of converting uh, ammonia to the nitrate and <coughs> so in this case the nitrosomonas it oxidizes the ammonia into nitrite and finally nitrobacter it uses the nitrite to obtain energy and oxidizes into nitrate so these are all the interactions which has been takes place in the case of positive interactions so in the next class we will see a negative interactions thank you